Hey friends, welcome to the first trick. Now let's say we have opened Power BI and now we want to build a report. So I, in this folder here, and you can get the data also from the resource section from the course, I have one specific Excel file, which is this PBI training one sheet. So what this basically contains is, if I double click here, let's just open that. Let me just make this smaller so you can see that. It's just an Excel file with some data in here, with some sales data to be specific. And we can see that it contains one tab, which currently is called orders. So one sheet in this file. Let's say this is our use case. Now, let me just close this for now. And then let's just import the sheet. So nothing new. You just know how that works. You go to import data from Excel or also up here, Excel workbook. We click it and we just reference to the sheet. And then let's click on open it. And let's just wait. And here is our navigator window and then we can choose either the table if you have a table or the sheet. Now let's say in this case I only have one sheet so I can simply take the sheet here it's called orders and then I can click on in this case transform the data if I want to adjust it or I click on load. For now I click on load uh, because I just want to import the data now and this is something very common and this works without any problems right. So I can see here I get my orders and now I can use any of my fields in here to get started with my report. So let's say this is a monthly report uh, where we want to report our current sales figures to our, let's say, uh, management team, right? So let's just choose one of the columns. I just want to show you that this works the way it should be. So I can create, for instance, let's say a bar chart here. So let me just select bar chart here. And then I choose any of the other fields. In this case, I don't have a measure, but let me just choose now, for now at least, just sales because the main point is actually uh, how can we deal with errors. So this works without any problems. So we got one chart and of course we can create additional charts here as well to create a full report. Now, what happens in the following case? Let's just say I now go into my Excel file here and let's just say this Excel file gets replaced. So this is a very common scenario. Just think about it. Maybe you have also experienced that each month you get a new sales data. So for instance, it can be automatically created and then put into a specific folder. And instead of calling it orders here, maybe it's called different, right? So maybe oftentimes something like, for instance, this is sales in uh, January uh, 23, for instance, something like that, right? Or 0123, whatever you want to call it, right? So that's the new sheet name. And let's say if it updates to February, then again, the, the name of the sheet will change. So let me just save this for now. Click on Control S to save it. And then let's go back inside our report in here. And now let me try to refresh the data. So let's say you have new sales data. Uh, the underlying data has changed. And now you click on refresh, either by clicking refresh here or right click on the orders table and click on refresh here. That would also work. So let's click refresh, click on refresh. And you see that we got an error here. So we run into an error here, orders, the key didn't match any rows in the table. So this happens when the sheet itself, where you want to load the data from has changed. So in this case, the sheet name, right? So not the data inside the sheet, this can happen. This doesn't create any problems, but if the name of the sheet changes, then Power BI can't find the order sheet anymore. Because remember what we did was, we just gave the sheet a whole new name. And this happens, as I said, often, very often, for instance, each month or each week, depending on how often you receive new data. So what can you do? Of course, you could go, or we could go inside the query editor, right? So go in here, and then we could say, uh, if you transform the data, and we could either rename the sheet inside the query editor, but this is not a, a scalable solution because we have to do it each uh, time the sheet uh, or new data uh, gets arrived, right? So what can we do instead? So let me just first fix this for now. Let's go back in here and let's call it back orders, right? So if I call this orders here, orders, and I save this and I go close this down and now I will try to refresh it. You'll see that this refresh works without errors, right? So Power BI can find the orders sheet in this case and everything works fine. So now the solution. Let's first go inside transform data here inside the query editor. So now we, we're in the query editor and let's go to the advanced editor tab. So here we need to just play around with the M code a little bit, but don't worry, 
uh, it won't be too intimidating, I, I promise. So click on Advanced Editor here, and this is the M code. Unfortunately, I can't zoom in here, but let me just copy this, Control C to copy everything, Control C, uh, and then I open in here an editor, and let me just paste this inside, and now you can see that that's what the data looks like. So hopefully that is good, uh, big enough for you, but of course you also can copy and paste it from your own Power BI file. So where is the actual problem? So if we take a look at the M code, we see that the original problem lies in the second step. In this order sheet, it's referencing the source, which is the step above, and here it specifies an item, and this item is hard-coded, calling orders. So this means that it always searches for a sheet inside the Excel file. You can see it here, the kind is sheet. And this sheet needs to be called orders. And that is exactly the problem. Because if we rename it, or a system which sends the data to us automatically renames it each month, then of course we would need to have to adjust it here. So of course we could go to the editor, and then now I can write in here, for instance, sales underscore 0123, for instance, if it's January 23, or whatever kind of name has been changed. I can change it here, and then the query works fine until the next change. So instead, we could do the following. We could say, instead of using hard-coded values here, because we only have one sheet, we just get rid of that, and of course we can just remove this completely. So this kind of sheet, this can be actually placed inside, because it's still an Excel sheet. But now, we just remove the hard-coded part where we specify a specific sheet name. And now, let me just copy this, Control c to copy everything, Control c and let me go back to Power BI, so let me just go here and just paste it. Of course, you could also remove it here directly. I just wanted to show it to you that it is a little bit bigger in size. I paste this inside, and everything we did was just remove the specific name of the sheet, which was explicitly stated here and hard-coded. And now if I click on Done, you see that we got no syntax errors. But let's just check that first. We click on Done, and you see that we still receive all the data, so nothing has been changed, which is good. So the table itself, this is a name in Power BI, it's still called orders. But that doesn't matter, right? Because it's just the name of the table inside Power BI, but not referencing the sheet name. So that's why I can click on Close and Apply now. So we load it, and we still see our data, so nothing has changed here. But now, if we go back inside our Excel file here, let me just actually go in here, in the file itself, and let's just name it, and let's say now it's February in 2023, so the system then sends the data, maybe place it automatically in a specific folder, where Power BI then should load the data from. And this is the February sales, so let's call this February 23. It's just the name of the sheet, right? And the next month it will be March, and so on. So let's just save this, Control S to save it. And just imagine that the sales data has also changed now for the new month, of course. Or many, uh, some maybe additional rows have attached here, whatever, right? The date underlying data change is not the very important point here. The main point is really the naming of the sheet. So let's just save it. Uh, okay, Control S to save it. And let me go back inside Power BI. And now let me try to refresh it, right? So let's click on uh, Refresh. And you see that it loaded without any errors. So this means now for this one sheet, this could be now the new month. Let's say, just say this is not only February. Let's say this is now March. March. Let's try it one more time and also maybe modify the underlying data source. Here we got different kinds of categories. Let's add a new category uh, in here. Where is it? Let me just maybe scroll a little bit in here. Let's say there is a category. Uh, where is it? Here, the category, and the category is, for instance, here, let's say a computer, right? Computer here. And then let me just add some, some uh, sales price here. Uh, we reference to sales. Let's call this maybe um, 300,000, right? So like that, uh, save it, Control S to save it. And if I go in here, and let's just refresh this, go in here, click on refresh, and you see that now we get a new category, which is called computer, and we don't have any issues, even though we renamed the sheet, okay? And that's the trick here. So now we do not have any errors, mayor, uh, errors anymore regarding uh, renaming of sheets, and we can refresh the data automatically, and there is no manual intervention from our side. Hope that helps, give it a try, Thanks a lot for watching and hopefully see you in the next video. Until then, best guys.